Vivarium floating plants. These are supposedly the easiest, or one of the easiest plants you can keep in an aquarium. Their relative ease is due to the fact that they're at the top of the aquarium, which means they get the most light out of all of the plants in the tank, and also the fact that they grow typically very, very fast on relatively small amounts of nutrients. You would think then that there's not a great deal that can go wrong when it comes to keeping aquarium floating plants. However, I have found this to be incorrect because there are three real things that you can get wrong with them. And I have inexplicably done all three wrong in a row. Because of this, I thought it would be a great chance to tell you what I did wrong and how to avoid these issues and also fix them. Now you can see these leaves have got all sorts of issues. They are mottled brown with spots on them. Some of them are rotting away. Some of them are yellow. Um, there are very few leaves here that actually look as healthy as they should do. Now, the first problem I made was to do with the lighting on this tank. It's kind of a lie, actually, but I'll get to that in a second. The lighting on this tank is a brilliant light. It's Arcadia Jungle Dawn LED Bar. Now, this light is designed for high intensity vivariums and paludariums to grow tropical vivarium plants, including orchids. And it is specifically designed for this purpose being at the right spectrum of light, so the right Kelvin to grow these plants, and also at an extreme output of lumens and par, so that the plants get the most from the light. All good things, and it worked perfectly well for a couple of months. That was until I made my first mistake. The first mistake includes this timer here. Now these timers work perfectly well, so long as you do a few things, and one of those things is to actually remember um, that you've turned the timer from being on the timer itself to actually being on continuously. On the side, there's a little switch, a little rocker switch. You turn it up for being on continuously and down to be on the timer. Now, in a previous video, I uh, needed the light on because I was filming in the morning. And then what I did is forgot that I had done that and walked away. Five days later, I'm in my shed and I'm wondering why have my leaves all gone very, very yellow. And that's because I left the light on continuously for five days straight. And when you do that to plants, basically they get overexposed to the light. They can't process that amount of light uh, continuously because they need a dark cycle to get rid of all the waste materials that builds up in them during photosynthesis. If you don't allow this dark period to happen, then what happens is the leaves burn as they still have all the waste materials in them. They kind of get toxic, I suppose, is the best way of uh, describing it. Toxicity builds up inside the leaf and they start to die quite quickly and they go bright yellow. So as you can see, these leaves, although they're yellow, they're not bright yellow. And that's because that particular issue has already passed. However, it was a big issue and my entire aquarium plant surface was just a bright yellow mess and all of those leaves died off. And that's really the first problem. Don't overexpose or sometimes underexpose your floating plants to light because you will surely have them go yellow and die off. What I've done to rectify this, other than just remembering what setting I've got my light on, I've also set my timer so that it's got a dark period in the middle. So it's got a couple of hours on in the morning, a couple of hours off in the afternoon, and then some more on in the evening. And this just helps to break up the photosynthesis cycle. So then the next issue that I had with these plants me trying to sort out an issue of condensation in my aquarium. So being an open topped aquarium, you would see that there's quite a lot of chance of evaporation from this tank. And there was in fact a lot of condensation on my roof because of the amount of evaporation from this tank. So what I did quite sensibly was make a lid for it. And you can see a video of me making these lids uh, made from polycarbonate. The lid sits perfectly over the top, and you'd think that that was a completely sensible thing to do. Well, I did anyway. And in a tank without floating plants, probably would be. But one thing that floating plants don't like is condensation and wetness on their leaves. And this was the next chain of events which caused these floating plants to not have a very good time. There's also a little bit of wetness getting onto the leaf around the filter, 
because it does splash a little bit of water onto the, the leaves around it but it's not really an issue because basically they're around the edge it's a small perimeter and those leaves normally would dry quite quickly being that it's quite warm in my shed but with the lid on that didn't happen and a lot of the leaves got very wet and this is indicated it's starting to clear through now because it was a couple of weeks ago but this is indicated by these leaves here you can see the brown spots on them you can see where they're rotting away around the edge you see all that and that is due to the condensation that was happening and dripping onto these leaves this spotting this rotting could be even that there's fungus or something eating away due to the condensation floating plants don't like wetness on their leaves and that is a big problem and it can be an issue in um, tanks with hoods on because the condensation can build up on the leaf and cause this rotting effect now i've taken the lid away and that's resolved that issue so that's two issues down we fixed the lighting and we fixed the condensation so why are these plants still looking awful they're looking yellow and in the last week and it really has been in the last week the leaves are getting these vein effects on them you can see here again under this light the next set of leaves so that was the first set of leaves that got glass of the light and then covered in condensation and then the ones that came through started off green and now they've got this veiny yellow effect entirely my fault and the reason it's my fault is because I wrongly assumed that the food I'm putting in here for my shrimps because this is a big shrimp tank would be enough to actually keep these plants sustained. And I didn't really want to do too many big water changes on here because the shrimps like stability and they were breeding and they still are breeding and they're doing very, very well. So I thought, why interrupt something that isn't broken? But I didn't realise how broken it actually was because now what I've had with these floating plants is massive nutrient deficiency. And that's indicated by numerous different things here. There's more than one nutrient deficiency going on. Um, the yellowing of the leaf of the green veins is called chlorosis normally, and it's an indication of a lack of iron and possibly a lack of magnesium. We've got yellowing of the new growth, which could be a, a deficiency of nitrates. So there's all sorts of things missing from the water column, which floating plants heavily rely on nutrients from the water column. It's all well and good having a brilliant substrate, but with floating plants, if you're not dosing into the water column, they're not going to be able to get it. And I guess this would affect tanks where you don't do very many water changes, things like a wall stad set up where there's no filtration uh, and things like that, and you rely on the substrate to provide the nutrients, then I would assume at some point you're going to have this exact issue. Now, as it is such a new issue, I haven't got round to actually getting the plants through it. But what I have done is a large water change using mineralization for shrimp so i used ro and then i used a uh, mineralizer for shrimp so the shrimp are totally fine none of them have died um, and that was to replace a lot of the micronutrients which i can't really put a name to but i know that they're there i know that plants need them and then the other thing i did i bought this fertilizer now this is a really good fertilizer it's a uk brand i don't know if it's available anywhere else in the country but if you can't get hold of this, then I think there's Seachem Flourish, which is very similar. And it's a complete fertilizer. So um, it's got nitrates, phosphates, potassium, magnesium, iron, manganese, copper, boron, zinc, and molybidium. I think that's how you pronounce it. But it's got everything that plants need, except for electrolytes, I guess. But um, this, and hopefully that's going to resolve the issue. Important not to let your guard down when it comes to floating plants. Any plant, really. Uh, I'll tell you when they're going wrong they'll go yellow their growth will stop you know things will start to change and you have to recognize this and try and rectify the issue now ideally what I would do is go through all these plants and remove all the gammy leaves I mean not all of them some of them are, are allowed to rot because they will move nutrients back into the water column but the majority are removed um, and we can already see that there are there is fresh growth coming through there are some of these plants which have got little sprouts coming out of them. Hope that I've actually done the right thing. You can see this one here, in fact, it's got a nice little fresh growth in the middle. Um, it's got a little runner coming off of it. So they respond quite quickly. Once you've worked out what you've done wrong, flow's quite forgiving and that's why they're a nice thing to keep. Thank you for watching. I hope this video has been 
uh, useful and entertaining. If you have liked it, please leave a like below. If you haven't liked it, feel free to leave a dislike. Also, I'd be really appreciative if you could leave a comment and let me know what you feel about this video, if I've missed anything out, or if there's anything you'd like to add to it yourself. For more of this kind of content, please remember to subscribe to my channel as well. So thank you so much for watching and happy fish keeping.